So what I want to talk about in this, um, just in an, another series of lessons, is uh, I want to talk about the origin of the chemical elements. So if we have a look here at the periodic table, so we have all of these individual elements that are made up on the, that, that are on the periodic table. And the, the question really is, or the theory, or what we want to try and understand is, where did these come from? And how did these come about? How do we end up with these elements? Um, and that's really what that's really what I want to talk about. So, first of all, like what we we'll need to kind of look at two really important elements that, that are, if you like, the starting points for understanding where all of the other elements came from, are hydrogen and helium. So we have the first and second elements on the periodic table. So we can see here is this is the first element and this is the second element on the periodic table. Now, in order to try and understand um, and kind of get a grip of like where, how all of the elements came about, there's a couple of things that we need to understand. So one is nuclear physics. So nuclear physics really relates to when we take the structure of the atom. So if we take helium, for example, so helium has a core, and in that core it has one proton, which is positively charged. Outside the proton then it has this space, and in that space you have what's known as an electron, which is which is negatively charged. Negatively, so this is negatively charged and this is positively charged, and this is the structure of hydrogen. Now, if we were to think about the nucleus, we're talking about in here, so this is the nucleus, it's the nucleus of a hydrogen atom. If we take helium on the other hand, so helium is the second element on the periodic table, so this number up here is what's known as the atomic number. And it represents the number of protons that an element has within its nucleus. And it also represents the number of electrons that um, element has as well. So protons, so we have protons, and they are positively charged, and they are within the nucleus. So this is the nucleus. We have neutrons, and they don't carry any charge. And then we have the electron, which carries a, a negative charge. And also as well, there's mass associated with these as well. So the mass of a proton is one, so one atomic unit. The mass of a neutron is one. And then the mass of an electron is so small, it's, it's negligible. Okay, we don't really count it. Um, so, so this is hydrogen, and if we look here, so this is what's known as the chemical symbol. If we take helium then, what does helium look like? So helium is, is an element. It contains two protons, which are positively charged. So these are the two protons. And then it also contains two um, neutrons, which don't carry any charge. So these are the neutrons, let's say. They don't carry any charge. And these elements are contained. So this is the nucleus. And then, very, just very much like um, hydrogen, then outside here in a region of space, it has um, two electrons, two two negative charges out here. So these are the electrons. These are the protons. And then these are the neutrons. And you notice that the neutrons are contained within the nucleus. The protons and neutrons are contained within the nucleus. So when we talk about nuclear physics, what we're talking about are the reactions between the nucleuses. What can happen is the nucleus of elements, they can combine together and they can 
they can cause react chemical reactions. And that's what we'll kind of talk a little bit about when we talk about nuclear physics. Um, so within nuclear physics, what we want to try and understand from, from the origin of, of all of the elements, we want to try and figure out, so where did the light elements come from? So the light elements are all of the elements up to iron. So when we talk about the light elements, we're talking about, so if we have a look here, so we have all of these elements here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So all of these, all of these, all the way right up to um, iron, which is here on the periodic table. Now, the, the way their periodic table is arranged is, you see this number here, one, the atomic number increases by one as we go across. So what that means is, So what this means is that this number increases by one as we go across. So we see hy hydrogen is the first element and the number one here represents the number of protons within the nucleus. So hydrogen has one proton. We move to the next element, helium. It has two protons in its nucleus. If we move to the third element, lithium, it has three. Um, if we move to the fourth beryllium, it has four protons within its nucleus. So that's how it's arranged. So really when we talk about the formation of the light elements, we're talking about elements from one all the way up to <coughs> iron, which is the 26th element. So iron has 26 uh, protons within its nucleus. And then, so we want to look at how the light elements are formed. But then we also want to look at how the heavy elements are formed. So the, the heavy elements are everything above iron. So if we take the heavy elements, we're talking about all of the elements after this point. So starting with cobalt and moving all the way across. And what you'll notice is that as we move along here, the nuclei, the nucleus, or the number of protons within the nucleus gets very, very large. It increases dramatically. Um, <clears throat> also, as well, just to mention, if we have a look, like for example, at helium, we see here that there's a number here underneath here. And we can say that this is the, the uh, mass number for helium. And we can see that it's four. If we want to work out the number of neutrons that are present within the nucleus, what we do is we take this number at the bottom and we subtract this, the bigger number and we subtract from the smaller number. And what that will leave us with then, so the mass of an element, it comes from the number of protons and the number of neutrons that it has. So we see here that the mass of helium is roughly four. So each of these sub what are called subatomic particles, um, each represents one atomic mass unit. So we see there's four atomic mass units in here. Two of the atomic mass units come from the protons and then the other two come from uh, the neutrons. So what we want to do is we want to figure out the number of neutrons. We just subtract this number down here, which represents all of these um, subatomic particles within the nucleus from this number up here. And that leaves us with the number of neutrons that are present. So if we take then, like how are these elements then formed? So light elements, for example, they are formed through a fusion, what are known as fusion processes. So fusion processes basically mean if this is one nucleus here or one proton, and we have another proton here, they come together and they form the two nuclei join together and they release a huge amount of energy. So this is like roughly fusion means you fuse, for example, the nuclei of elements together, the nuclei of different elements together. Um, neutron capture then, so the heavier elements are made through a process that's known as neutron capture. Neutron capture. 
and if we think so neutrons are these guys here so these neutrons and um, what can happen is these neutrons can be free and if you have let's say a nucleus so this is a nucleus you could have a neutron it can join this nucleus so this is a nucleus or nuclei so this is your neutron it joins this here and what can happen then is it can change into what's known as, it can change to a proton and then it can emit off radiation so that's just very like high level just very quickly just kind of introducing this idea as well but what happens is we can take like elements like iron for example and we can the nucleus uh, iron nuclei and it can capture neutrons and those neutrons can change into protons and what happens is that increases the atomic number and it actually changes them into um, other elements so if we take for example iron we can see that iron has 26 protons if it captures a neutron if it's if a nucleus of iron catches a neutron and it changes that into a proton it it turns into cobalt so we can use this to try and explain how these other heavier elements are formed so this is a process that's known as neutron capture now also then as well within this area what we want to kind of look at too is this um, idea of so astrophysics so astrophysics then some ideas in relation to astrophysics that we want to look at is what's known as chemical evolution so kind of chemical evolution is we take for example like how elements are formed and how like let's say when we start off like when the universe started off what was the composition in relation to the different elements that were present and then over time how did that change and how did that evolve so if we take we're trying to kind of get an idea of the earth has been around for 13.8 billion years sorry the universe has been around for 13.8 billion years and over that time um the universe over that time the universe or the contents of the universe have evolved the chemistry of the the system that is the universe has evolved so we wanna, that's what chemical evolution that's what it kind of talks about um some of the things that we some of the ways that we try and study that is we use this idea or this technique that's known as spectroscopy and that's basically we can study the light that's given off by stars and it contains this thing that we call a spectra so we have kind of this this set up here so these are what are known as spectra so these things over here so basically just very quickly and i will talk about it in a little bit more detail if we take um, what's known as white light for example and this is the kind of light that comes from the sun within that white light you have all the different colors of light within that that are part of what's known as the visible spectrum and when you pass that white light through a prism it splits up the different colors and we get this kind of a uh, rainbow effect and that's the same thing that happens as well and um, with rainbows for example the light that's coming from the sun is passed through a raindrop which acts as a prism and it splits up the light into um, all of its different colors now if we take a gas for example that's made up of a particular element and energy is given to that gas what will happen is the um, atoms that make up that gas they will actually give off light of their own but that light it won't have all of the colors of the rainbow in it it'll only have individual unique colors depending on the type of atom that's present and this is what's known as an emission spectra so the same thing we pass that light through a prism split it up into its different parts and um, we can identify then the element that's present there so we can't like look at the individual atoms but we can look at the effects the atoms have and um, such as they produce a spectrum and then the other one then is what's known as an absorption spectrum 
So what happens here is we have white light, for example. It has all the colors of the rainbow. And we if that light is passed through a cloud of a particular element, what that will do is it will soak up that atom. Not only will it give off, if it's given energy, will it give off the particular colors of light, but it'll also absorb those colors of light as well. So you pass white light that has all the colors of the rainbow in it, pass it through a cloud of a particular element, what's going to happen is that element will absorb the particular colors of light that it likes. So we can see this here. And then if you take the light that comes out the other side and you pass that through a prism, it splits it up. But it produces what's um, it produces this uh, what's known as an absorption spectrum. So you have white light, you have all the colors of the white light, but the ones that this particular atom likes have been absorbed or taken out. So you see these bands, for example, that are present here. And uh, that, that's what we mean by like spectroscopy. We can look at these, um, we can look at light and look at starlight, and we can tell an awful lot about um, the elements that are present when we do that. So that's, um, that's spectroscopy. Um, we also use, for example, telescopes and observing. So telescopes and observing. So there's there's telescopes, for example, that are on the Earth that that um, that can look at can look through the atmosphere and look at and um, observe. Let's say as much of the observable universe as we can see using this technique. And there's also, um, we have, for example, the Hubble telescope that is, is outside the atmosphere. And it's also um, looking at stars and looking at this, the galaxies and things as well. So, they, so these are some of the techniques that we use and we'll talk a little bit about those. And, um, and then also as well within this area of astrophysics, then you have what's known as, like, we want to look at the oldest stars. So stars have a life cycle, and they're older and younger stars, and they have specific characteristics that we can use and look at. And then using this process, we want to kind of look at this idea of what's known as star archaeology. So star archaeology or stellar archaeology is really, um, you know, kind of looking at, trying to, like, basically looking at the light that's that's been generated and looking at the stars that are present. Now we try, we kind of want to try and get an idea of the origin. So the same way an archaeologist will dig up bones and date those bones and try and look for artifacts and then try and piece all that together to tell a story about what it was like back during historic times. Um, you know, it's like star archaeology or stellar archaeology does the same thing, but we want to kind of look at how the chemistry of the universe, for example, has evolved over time, this idea of chemical evolution. So that's just a kind of quick introduction to um, the areas that we'll kind of look at when we, when we talk about this idea of um, thinking about the origin of the universe or the origin of the elements. And the elements are very important. You know, these elements make up everything that's around us. They make us up as well. So we're trying to figure out, like, where did these building blocks come from? Okay, thank you for listening.